specific answers to stuff. It's just, um, at some point, um, I don't know, it, there's a bridge in between that isn't, like, communicated as well. Um, and so, like, for example, like, their steps are, like, make a major motion picture and then have everyone, like, world peace and then we start. Like, it's... There's a lot of details in between there. Right. But getting from now to there right. is the hard part that isn't as detailed. As opposed to what's... The city itself, yeah, the idea. Yeah, the, like the, the future itself. The, yeah. They have that all figured out. Right. And it's great. Um, like, every single little detail. But then, going from now to the future mm -hmm. is what they haven't solidified as much. Right. And so, I think that's the the difficulty in the conversation with the yeah. project. And yeah, so, yeah, and yeah. so, I've just lately just been calling like ref, referring to it, but like going like ideal society because right. that is right. that is an ideal society for me. And mm -hmm. um, getting there is the hard part. And I think getting there is a much more long winded process than making a movie mm -hmm. and expecting everyone to agree with it. Like, it, it takes, yeah. like, an well, evolution I mean, again, of... You, you haven't convinced me yet. And yeah. I don't want to kill you. <laughs> 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 and there are people that want to kill you yeah. that you also have to yeah. convince. And, yeah, that's that's kind of a... Yeah. That's, that's a little difficult. I mean, most people can't agree on, like, what kind of pizza to get. Yeah, and it's not so much an agreement on that, but mm. there's also social agreements that we have that we do agree on and we don't realize that we agree on. So oh, you like, mean just like just general like ways society conducts itself? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so no one had to tell you at some point that like you exchange money or services it, it for was goods. It, it, like... You didn't have to... It, it's so been we've around... we've got this thing. It's yeah. called money. You can yeah. exchange it for everything yeah. else. It's been around long enough to where... It's so ingrained. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. just agree that that's how it goes. Um, so, I mean... <clears throat> it can work that same way. We can agree that, oh, this is how we should implement our resources this is how we should um you know but the hard part is getting there and so for me at least i think the the largest way of getting there is education mm -hmm. um like um i think i had mentioned this before but like it it's one thing to be educated in that yeah um, we're on. okay <laughs> yeah. okay it's one thing to be educated in um the physics or whatever it's another thing to be educated in that like the way that you treat a person affects their psychological blah 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 like people's knowledge affects their behavior and affects the decisions that they make in society and within one another um okay. So, oh okay okay um that that's interesting okay because um i also sort of think that it's not necessarily knowledge but also people's own ideas already mm -hmm. can influence those things yeah but there are things that are false and there are things that are closer to truth right right of course we don't know that many absolute truths if any but like we have enough knowledge to show that these things are consistently true they're at least true for the moment <laughs> <laughs> um and the things that are consistently true um 
should have much more weight yeah. in society yeah. and ideas than those that are just stupid. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, definitely. And that's that's what should and that's what I mean by education. Mm-hmm. Not just like going to school, but just the things that people know and understand. If you it, it's not taught in a school in Alabama that black people are inferior, but it is a part of someone in the KKK's education per se to be like, oh yeah, white people are great. Like, and that, <laughs> and that yeah, sort of education yeah. is, is sort of what leads to their behavior. Mm-hmm. And so it's not just a school teaching, but it's also a cultural and social education. So you're kind of throwing knowledge under the banner of everything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I thought you were talking like, I thought you were referring to like just simply facts and you know, like actual, like quantifiable data, not like literally what you know about the world and what you already conceive well, and whatnot. Okay. Yeah. But that makes, that makes more sense. But that's then. also quantifiable. Y- you can either say that white people are superior because God wants it to be so. Mm. And that's, that's a, that's a truth claim. Right. That's a claim you're making about the world that we live in that you are expecting to have effect in the real world. Right. But you can also take quantifiable data and show, oh, these are measures of white people, these are measures of Hispanic people, these are measures of Asian people, and what shows is the data says these people are good at this and this and this. Right. In this moment. Um, And that says a lot more than just saying because God says so or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I the, mean, there's, the, uh, there's, the a, there's a provable aspect of it, which yeah. is definitely nice, or at least the arguable aspect yes. of it. You and can't the just say, like, my God says so, so <laughs> I'm the best. And that's the problem a lot nowadays. Not so much even with, you know, Christianity, but, like, um, the way that a lot of Islamic countries and yeah there are Islamic countries that aren't as like violent or suppressive or whatever but like if the ideas say that you know being gay incurs the damnation of God and his wrath or whatever like there's we can show information that says otherwise Um, right (laughs) <laughs> well, I don't know in terms of damnation. I don't know if anyone knows who's getting damned or yeah, who but doesn't. Like, but yeah, people, no, I get what you mean. Like, yeah, yeah. And so having having a value in information, having a value of that being part of our culture, right? Rather than having a outdated uh, system of like because God says so. Um, and so, sort of that kind of education. <laughs> okay, okay. So it's um, so are you arguing for a more like secular kind of society, more or less, that values not even so much secular. I'm just using the God as an example, but like there's other ideas that yeah, um, they're just false that are just false that we just hold to be true just because we haven't thought past it or haven't thought to research it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, cats being funny. Um, but I don't know. I think that there's like a social perception of what humans are like or what human or what, uh, you know, certain cultures are like. And some of those things may be false. For example, um, and I have mentioned this before, but like, with Sex at Dawn, it challenges the social narrative that says that humans are by nature monogamous. And what yeah. it says is, yeah. hey, the information indicates otherwise. Right. And right. so we have this like culture built around monogamy, but whenever, you know, uh, marriage fails due to 
uh, husband cheating or whatever, just going, ah, you are a horrible person, get out of here. It's like, well, yeah, they betrayed the contract, but also there's hundreds of thousands of years of human development that is kind of hard to counteract, especially whenever you're trying to live against your hundred of South and Civil yeah. years of evolution yeah. or whatever. Okay. And okay. so so those ideas challenge the way that we act in society. Right. Right, 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 right. Okay. So um what do you what do you think about things like not necessarily just monogamy but in general like things that very obviously kind of go against the human grain. You know, like deciding not to engage with ult- multiple people. Um, you know, I mean, there's positives and negatives, and there's also just like what works now. Okay. Because that, so that's you're more the situational. Difference. Yeah. Okay. Um, because there may be an ideal, but we we can't live like hunter gatherers anymore. There's just not enough space and resources. And just you wait till the like... bombs fall, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, Chris Ryan says this a lot that we we live in a zoo. Now. Yeah, we live yeah. in a version of what humans should live in. Okay, and we can choose to live in the Calcutta Zoo, which is just like small cages. Very and sad. like sad monkey and sad lion in a small cage or we can live in the San Diego Zoo which is like tries to adapt their environment to their ideal environment to make it as comfortable as possible it's not going to be like it was for them in the wild we right. can't live in the wild anymore but we should at least try and make it as fitting to where we're comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that applies to a lot of other things in that, you know, we can, um, or even social perception of like, you know, yes, we have monogamy and we have a uh, God and then we have, um, I think one that we totally get into is that the idea of like, patriotism is I think it's dangerous um okay okay um, <laughs> okay yeah I, yeah this is this will be an interesting one here okay um and that the idea of like dying for your country is preposterous honestly like because it's you're dying because some corporation needed money from this country over here and so we're sending soldiers to deal with that situation and now you're just dying because someone said so but we we paint this picture around it in order to make it more acceptable and make it to where you're more willing to die for your country well Oh, well, you know, definitely a couple of things there, for sure. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, yeah, so I think the, you know, the recent, um, you know, if you if you do think it's, you know, the wars were just fought for the benefit of corporations, which I would say, you know, there's definitely some valid points to be made mm-hmm. on that, as far as, you know, the willingness for us to go to war yeah. so these companies can make money, sure. But I don't think that was necessarily how it was in the past. Yeah. You know, it, it definitely wasn't in the past why people went to war. I mean, World War II definitely was not at all a war about corporations making money and, you know, getting a benefit from directly corporations. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's... But it's always been a struggle for resources and a struggle for power. Right. Um, well, and I would also like to say, I mean, I definitely... I definitely see what you mean, and I can see how you would boil down, you know, the end result to, yeah. like, power and resources, but I would also like to say I think there is a 
self-determination factor mm -hmm. there, which I guess you could boil down to power on one end, mm -hmm. but I also think people's desire for self-determination also fuels the want to, um, I guess, be patriotic or go to war. Yeah, but there's, there's a want to be, you know, a want to have self-determination, but it, it doesn't mean that you have to dress in a uniform and go to the front lines and be shot. That, that doesn't affect your self-determination. What does affect your self-determination oh, I mean, is how you act in society. No, 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 no. I, I mean, as a, as a group, as a state, the desire for you to be free of another country's whims could spur that kind of patriotism. Yeah. I, I think that's, I didn't mean like as the individual, like I will join the military so I can self-determine. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that doesn't make sense. But I mean like from a national perspective. Yeah. From, but yeah. What are nations though? Very large tribes. Uh, what's the point anymore? the point anymore again it's yeah, it's to uh be different because lines it's no 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 i think i think there's very real reasons to place lines such as just differences in ideals for sure mm -hmm. um you north and south korea probably the perfect example <laughs> of why there should be lines um because, you know, one, if you throw those kind of ideologies together, they will kill each other. Those lines divide them in such a way where, yeah, they might not be particularly friendly with each other. They might not want to deal with each other. However, they're not going to go all out and just murder each other and there won't be anyone left. But how many people in North Korea actually actually agree with North Korea's ideas. I how many so. of them are just hostages inside their own country? I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm sure there's absolutely people who are dissidents and have different ideas. However, after being in North Korea for so long, I am sure many of them are brainwashed to the point of not understanding what's going on, where they legitimately adopt the ideology wholesale. Okay, so... <clears throat> the reasoning for separating countries is because people are brainwashed into <clears throat> wanting to separate into countries. No. No, 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 no. It's because one would override the other, possibly. And again, you know, it, it would end up with the slaughter of thousands, millions of people. It's it's like the little... Uh, I don't know if you like had to live with your... Like in the same room as your brothers <laughs> growing yeah, up. definitely. But I'm sure like you've always seen like the like... The little, like, goofy, like, tape line across the room. Like, you stay on your side of the room, I'll stay on my side of the room. Yeah. You do whatever on that end, and I'll do whatever here. Don't yeah. cross my line. And then once we reach a certain point of maturity, we realize how much that's bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. But then, the other thing, too, is if you have a child, a.k.a. North Korea... <laughs> freaking out and screaming at the top of the lungs, you might want to shut the door on them and say, I, I don't want to deal with that right Why now. Why not raise the child to not throw a tantrum? Well, I, in, in literal terms, because it would lead to the death of millions <laughs> of people, and you don't necessarily want to do that. Well, yeah, but this goes back to what I'm saying about the ideas drive <laughs> what we do in society and so mm -hmm. if we are more educated towards a more correct answer um then these ideas that are oh well humans just need to be subjugated by kings and leaders and right. like no, no no that's just a bad idea and we don't have any room for bad ideas no but i think lines definitely make sense though and that that's the point is you don't want that spilling over you, you don't want North Korea's awfulness to spill over into South Korea at all. We don't want bad ideas. Right. So that's why we <laughs> quarantine it and make sure no one messes with it ever. Because that's a whole ton of just awful 
thrown into one place. Is and it that impossible to change people's minds? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not impossible to change their minds, but I would want to make clear that stuff that's going on in North Korea, it's 1984. Like, mm. it, it's the Orwellian <laughs> nightmare realized. Yeah. It's legitimately, like, that bad. Which makes it ridiculously difficult to yeah. fix that. The The only way that you could possibly fix that would be through their leaders, mm -hmm. which are also insane. Yeah. And so, hopefully, you know, at some point they'll get a rational human being at the top and there could at some point in time be a more thorough and fair exchange of ideas there's and they could a lot of themselves. possibilities and yes it would be very difficult but giving up and just throwing the line and just letting it be over there is childish and I don't think so. I think it's pragmatic. Lazy. It's lazy. <laughs> Didn't, uh, we, we had the conversation <laughs> beforehand where uh, you, you told me human beings are lazy, which is the root of why we do all things. Nature is not necessarily good or bad. It just is. Right, right, right. But, but you said we're lazy. Yes. So I, th I think that's, you know, pragmatism... In, in a way, is laziness, but it does have a logic to it. Mm -hmm. You know, there there is a logic to let's keep the bad ideas on that side so we don't get screwed up in the process. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, it, opening, opening those things up, I mean, you, I think you have to admit that that's a very real danger that could hurt yes, millions. It's incredibly difficult. And... We've done incredibly difficult things, yes, and we yes. can continue to triumph over incredibly <clears throat> difficult things. Which, again, so so if we're if we're on this subject here, mm -hmm. it I'll, I'll bring this back to patriotism. Fun. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring this this all around. So, you want to do incredible things. Mm -hmm. You want to do hard things, mm -hmm. and I think at times that requires war. It's not good, it's not anything that you want to happen, but sometimes that's absolutely what's necessary. Doing incredible things does not... Not, not all incredible no, things, I'm not... <laughs> Doing incredible things does not mean you have to unite around a country. Doing incredible things can be uniting around the idea of doing incredible things. You don't have to be united just because we're from the same place. You can be united because we share these ideas. And that goes beyond... Beyond. Uh, it goes beyond. past... Uh, I, there's a podcast I listen to, and they say beyond, and anytime anyone says beyond in a conversation, you have to say beyond. But uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it goes past just where you're from. Oh, yeah, it no, goes no, no, no. past, yeah. like your skin color it's just we're all human beings trying to not die on this rock flying through the galaxy right and we all have extremely different ways of doing that and many of those ideas contradict and cannot coexist in any meaningful way and some of those ideas are more right than others absolutely no yeah no no no, no. we we definitely agree on that and then we as a whole should just move towards, we should value and move towards the more right idea. I am in agreement with you, but I think, again, for probably very different reasons. <laughs> but yeah, no, 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 definitely, definitely. And so the struggle there shouldn't be kill those with different ideas. It should be try and unite and work towards a whole of a greater idea. This is the collectivism, individualism thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> which, did you want to get into collectivism versus individualism now, or did you want to continue this, I mean, this track here? But the the thing is, I mean, it, it merges well enough. Okay, that okay. You can still share in good ideas and still be an individual, 
there. Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's absolutely. not like you just I'm agree not saying... on everything and just become a big hive mind. Right. Um, right. But you can still agree that hey, you know, um, everyone is an equal and everyone should be able to do the same things, and I want my hair to look like this or something like you can still share in good ideas but still be different people oh yeah, yeah no 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 absolutely i am um, again as the as on the individual plane of thinking i am in agreement here yeah and so that that's not the form of individualism that i think is harmful the form of individualism that could be harmful is the form that values the individual much more so to where it hurts everyone else and then themselves. Um, okay, so I, I'm going to need some clarification before. I guess uh, what, I guess in your terms, what would define that kind of harmful action so I can, so I can speak accurately <laughs> over your point because I could um, be completely wrong. And, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, thinking of an example um I guess that could apply nowadays is that um, bank executives uh, making decisions and then screwing over the rest of the banks and then ending up with more money on their side and mm -hmm. the rest of the 99% ends up with their houses foreclosed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, yeah, they valued the individual much more so than the collective. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. And I think, um, uh, this probably has the fundamental, one of the fundamental differences that we see mm -hmm. things as is I do believe that the, um, those sort of crises also very much so ride on the back of government bailing them out. The the fact that you can you can screw up that much as as your own business, you know, your they own didn't screw up. Oh that no no much. no! A they lot of them, a lot did of them did. Purpose. Right, because we were right behind them and like, oh yeah, we don't want this to go bad. So here's money. Here's here's to <laughs> fix the issue. And it's like, no, that just encourages them to do the same thing. Because if you're playing poker. Mm -hmm. Without any risk, you're going to gamble everything. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what they have. You okay. know, they have no risk to that, to themselves, because we allow it. Yeah. Because we allow it. <laughs> we, it's, because as a society, we say, yes, let's bail all of these guys who have just totally screwed us over. Let's bail them out. And that gives them essentially permission not literal permission, and I don't think it's right, to take those risks that they mm -hmm. cannot do or shouldn't do in a normal circumstance. Yeah, but then as an individual valued themselves and disregarded everything else in order to make more money in that way. Right. Well, I guess, I guess it's again because I, I feel like it's the collectivist, like, we can't let that thing go bad, so we'll have to bail them out. I think that's that's a collectivist idea at uh, work there. I think that's silly because they should be held responsible for their actions and if they screwed everything over then they should pay for it, right? I guess it depends on the circumstance. Um, you know, I, I don't know a ton of the nitty gritty inside stuff in that sort There's of There's a documentary about bubble. it called Inside Job. There's a fun and very angering documentary. Yeah, um, yeah. But basically, they kept uh, taking out uh, very bad loans and just kept giving it out because it was in their favor to give out right. those loans. Right. And then as soon as the market the shifted, um, yeah. no one pays their loans, everybody defaults. Right. And so the banks go bankrupt. Right. Right. Which, again, I, I, I do believe we've mm -hmm. allowed them to get that big. You know, I mean... I know a lot of people are against, like, the big companies and whatnot. Yeah. 
Which I, I totally understand. Mm. Like, I am not in favor of the oligarchy that we yeah. have now. But I'm saying that that's an example of yeah. the valuing of the individual is much greater than that of the valuing of the collective. <clears throat> and so that's where it's harmful. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I get you. Okay. And then, and then to go, well since the individual did something bad, then everyone else has to pay for it? No. <clears throat> if you're going to go with the individual, go with the individual all the way and go, the individual fucked this up, the individual has to pay for it. Which I'm, I'm fine with, yeah. 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 So, I mean, at what point should the individual be allowed to make that bad decision? So, uh, are you talking corporation or are you talking individual? Like the, um, like the people who bought homes, like <laughs> way bigger homes than they should have ever got. Well, yes, they also made very bad decisions. So, I, I, that's, that's the clarification mm -hmm. I was wanting because I, I think there is a, you know, not saying that it's at all necessarily like the bank shouldn't have decided to lend that kind of money to those kinds of people mm -hmm. but at the same time I think it takes a certain amount of self-awareness to realize I can't afford this house yeah this is ridiculous for but me to still, even think about but it's still a value of the individual to go well I want a really big house and I have the self-determination to do so with this stupid loan yeah no, no, no. So, so, <laughs> because I think the the big thing there would be I, I I guess the 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 selfishness part that we kind of perceive maybe a bit mm. differently it's not in your self interest to screw something up that you can't afford you know doing something like mm -hmm. that you know you were saying like you have the self determination to get a house and like by all means get a killer house but <laughs> live within your means so you're not like about to die if you do something a little bit wrong yeah you know, there's there's that self responsibility aspect there. I'm not saying the banks didn't screw up, but I want to say I think it is also on those people as well. Yeah, but it's the idea of valuing the individual and the like grandiosity of the self or whatever. Of mm -hmm. yeah, I want a really big house, and right. that idea led to them making bad decisions. It was the value of the individual yeah. well, I've, that led them to their own demise. Yeah, well, I think I'm, I'm, I'm all for people getting big houses. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally 100% there. But I, I think it's, you know, within your means <laughs> is what you should live by. So if you, with, you know, if you're well within your means and you can buy a big house, go for it. Mm -hmm. But if you can't, you should have the self-understanding to realize that this isn't a good idea and maybe you should calm down and then attempt to make more money and end up getting a big house through a different means. Yeah. You want an educated individual. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I think, uh, I, I think, like, it's crazy to imagine that we have not had any sort of, like, economic, you know, uh, education at it's all. probably on purpose. You could say so. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous that, like, in a school system where everyone is semi-educated, that there has been absolutely no common <laughs> sense <laughs> education as far as finance goes. Yeah. I remember in high school we got that, like, so finance might be important. Let's make you take that class. And it was just a complete blow off. And it's like, yeah. you should have been growing up with this your whole life. Yeah. But I mean, the, that's what I'm saying, that the, the value of the individual um, supersedes the value of the collective. And so at some point, when does the collective have to jump in and be like, hey, we all need you as an individual to not do that? <laughs> I think 99% I think of the time, I think the individuals got the um, got the priority over mm -hmm. the collective. Pretty much ninety nine percent of the time, you have to really be doing something pretty bad <laughs> to 
to justify you stepping in and saying, no, this is, this is just a bad idea. <laughs> like, it takes a lot, a lot to yeah. end up doing that. Because I think you end up, um, inevitably, by doing those sort of things, end up punishing all of the individuals. Yeah. Because at that point, you know, you're limiting mm -hmm. that. Like, um, like, for instance, everyone's for free speech as long as everyone agrees. You know? That's not... I think that's a bad value to have. Well, okay, it's, go go ahead. You should be able to say whatever you want. Right. Even if people disagree. Right. right. And no, then... No, I'm, yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm on that value as well. Yeah. And then if you say something stupid, you get shot down on, by. Well, yeah, that's that's on you. Not literally shot down. Yeah, but... no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, like you, the the group is like that's a bad idea. Let's let's stop that. Yeah, and so that's where yes, the individual determination goes into the collective. But yes, the individual being free to say. Anything is fine. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I would absolutely hold that value as well. But I know there's plenty of people <laughs> who disagree. Yeah. You know. Um, um, if you've been listening to this podcast, uh, Terry and I talked about, like, social justice and all that junk. Oh, yeah. I, I can I can always get in on that yeah. if you were, if you were <laughs> I think they're absolutely against free speech. Yeah. Um, but anyways... A little the, bit off topic, but yeah. I think the separating the individual from the collective is like there is no one without the other. <clears throat> there can be one without the other. You can't have a collective of the individual, however, you can have an individual of the individual. If that makes sense. Oh. One more time. <laughs> you uh, you can't have an individual collective, but you can have an individual individual. Like you, one person can't be a collective, yeah. but one. But you have a collective of individuals, right? Right. But the it's just that like whenever you have a bunch of individuals, you finally have a collective. But the individuals still make up a part of that collective. Mm -hmm. And so those two aren't separate. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah um, we, we're all a part of the earth and <clears throat> we, yes, however individual you want to get, you are still on this damn planet whether you like it or not. Just you are wait still, till I get to Mars, man. You're still a part of the and collective. And then I can be the individualist <laughs> individual. <laughs> You're still right. No, no, no. A, I, I was, I was just screwing around. Of the yeah. universe, yeah. And that's, you know, again, it's like way bigger. Like Buddhist, the leaf <laughs> is in you, and I am the leaf and the sun, and blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. But like, it still, it still relates in that. Yes, you can have individuals be individuals, but you're still a part of the collective, whether you like it or not. <clears throat> so, because I feel like the best functioning society would be one in which everyone takes care of themselves How within so? within their means. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think you know the collect in, in general the the collectivist idea is that, you know, we're all in some way responsible for someone else. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all in a group, so we should all take care of each other, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Um, but my thinking is, is that if you prioritize yourself in a truly good way, which is, is an important piece in that, mm -hmm. is you don't do stupid things. Yeah. Like, again, I think I said it last time, but like, doing a ton of drugs is not a good idea. It's not <laughs> your self-interest. Don't do that. Yeah. You know? So, you know, it's not helping your life at all. <laughs> and so I think by each person taking care of themselves first, that releases the weight of the collective. Mm. So, if I, 
if I worry about what it takes for me to get food, mm-hmm. then you don't have to worry if I'm fed or not. Yeah. Because I'm taking care of it on my own. Like, mm-hmm. I have decided and I have chosen to take care of myself in that way. Yeah. You don't have to think about me dying in the street somewhere now. Mm-hmm. Because I was just like, I'm not going to eat today. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think the general attitude of that, of taking care of yourself in that way, is very good. It releases mm-hmm. that weight. You don't have to worry mm-hmm. about that anymore, and people can stick to themselves more without sacrificing. Sure. So less people are sacrificing their time, their effort, and their energy and resources into going to someone who isn't doing those things. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest weakness of collectivism is that eventually people catch on that other people will be taking care of you. And you end up doing nothing because, as we've spoken about before, Mm -hmm. people are lazy. And, you know, if you're not... Of the mindset that you wish to help the whole, Mm -hmm. and you realize, like, hey, if I don't go to work, I'll be okay completely. Mm -hmm. Maybe I won't go to work because I feel like not doing that. And it's kind of like the have you heard of like the tragedy of the commons? Mm -hmm. I I think it's very much so that, but you're making the entire planet into the scenario of the tragedy of the commons. The the difference is technology. Because, mm. as, oh, <laughs> no, because, no. <laughs> because it, it essentially goes in, into, like, uh, capitalism and, like, communism. And so um, the problem that communism had is that the people would work for the people and then as soon as the people realized that other people were working for them they just decided not to work and then nobody worked right that's that's exactly what you're saying i not not to interrupt you there but just kind of a side note story i had a uh, professor and she was uh teaching in germany Mm -hmm. for a while and it was after uh you know germany ended up becoming one germany yeah and there was a uh there was an East German who was uh, working, and he he painted houses mm-hmm. under under communist rule. Like mm-hmm. his whole thing was, I just paint houses. Yeah, and he was mad that he had to work a full day <laughs> because he would just go somewhere, paint a house for like four hours, and then just go home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just it's just kind of crazy. He was like, "What do you mean? Like I've got to stay here mm-hmm. all eight hours? Like that's <laughs> insane." <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's just a total, like, difference of ideology. It just yeah. completely different way of thinking. But, yeah. Uh, but it's also a, a a dissonance in the value because Marx himself valued work more than anything else. And it's the right. work that, right. like... And so if the ideas would have transferred <clears throat> accurately, then it would have been... Oh, I'm glad to work eight hours because it's the work that runs the machine or whatever, you know. Right, but I, I think the and that's that's what I think the difference between individualism versus collectivism mm-hmm. kind of really shows its teeth is um, there's not that immediate payoff. I, I mean, I people are smart, mm-hmm. you know, first off, but. There's only so much that they're willing to just give to whoever out of the charity of their heart. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think that for the most part, you know, it's hard to connect for an indiv- you know, an individual within a collective that you stamping sheet metal all day long <laughs> is really helping your nation out and yeah. making it a wonderful place to live. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah, you know, I guess communism. I don't want to pull, like, on paper communism, but, like, in a metaphorical ideal Mm -hmm. communist nation, everyone could work and improve the society around them through mutual labor. and every piece of machine is doing what it should. Right, you know, and that's that's the idea is, like, everyone's got a, you know, not a half-painted house, but a full-painted house Mm -hmm. in whatever color they wish, and... You know, everyone's got this great stuff because the guy in the sheet metal factory is yes. doing his work. Yes, and you're but, right. Every piece... Right. If right. you are expecting people to do it, every piece is not going to do what it should. And I think the, I think the rate of failure is much higher in collectivist societies than in individualist societies. Um, 
So, like, that whole, you know, I've got to work to do these yeah. sort of things. I'd have to check the statistics on that, uh, especially regarding, like, Scandinavia and, like, uh, more socialized countries and I, seeing how... Yeah. Um, oh, what's the... And, and another, I think this is more an issue with, uh, because I, I know your ideology isn't necessarily what you'd call socialist. Mm -hmm. You're more just collectivist, and socialism mm -hmm. is under the collectivist yeah. ideology banner. It's just mm -hmm. a different flavor of it, so I understand you there. But there are, um, I think there's like a state-run uh, uh, car factory mm -hmm. in um, in France. It starts with like an R. It's it's I. I'm terrible with it. They make awful cars. <laughs> Just terrible cars. It exists because the state perpetuates it. Mm -hmm. They make awful cars. Mm -hmm. No one buys the cars. No one wants the cars. Mm -hmm. If you look at the lot for the cars, not one of them is from the factory that they work in. And, like, half the time, people are just, like, sitting in the lunchroom doing nothing. Yeah. And that's you know. because they're forced to do so. That's why... The cars suck. <laughs> what do you mean, the... Well, like, I mean, if they had a reason to want to make good cars, then they would do so. Right. But they're I... forced to make cars, and so they're like, ugh, fuck. Well, no one's forced... shitty car. No, no one's forcing them to do anything. State it's run. A, it's a state run, but everyone could leave the factory and mm -hmm. find other private employment. I mm -hmm. mean... No one has to work at USPS. People choose to do so because mm -hmm. it's a job and they want money. Yeah. But there's no motivation for them to make a good car because it's a job to them. Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah, I'll show up. It's I, There's no motivation for me to make mm -hmm. the best car out there. Mm -hmm. So I'll just show up and shoot the shit for a while. Yeah. So, oh yeah, sorry for cursing. I don't know if you care I've or not. I've already done oh, okay. so. Okay, I, so. I didn't notice. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, you know, I think that's kind of the difference is um, there's not that direct correlation between I am doing something good for the whole. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's hard to motivate yourself in that system, whereas I think in a, um individualist society, mm -hmm. if it directly benefits you, you know, if I work harder... Yeah. I get more benefit, yeah. therefore I'm motivated to make a better product, yeah. work harder, and put out more. And society benefits yeah. as a whole, because you get more stuff, <laughs> and stuff is nice. I find that to be a change in values, because <sighs> yes, right now we value like, oh, I do a thing and I get a thing, like immediate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, there are people who value like oh i'm just doing this thing and i know that it's helping everyone else and that's why i enjoy right. doing it and those people just value helping everything else regardless mm -hmm. of whether it comes back to them at all or not they just like the idea of it and they value it that much right right um and that's a good thing because you get a a good person doing a good thing. Well, I have no, I have no arguments against <laughs> good people doing good things. Like, yeah. cool, do that. But I think it's unreasonable to imagine that everyone would be on board with that. I think, you know, I, I, I know people dislike the idea of like appealing to the lowest common denominator. Mm -hmm. But I think it does motivate the most people to work mm. in their self-interest. Like, if you know that you will see a check at the end of the week, mm -hmm. and based on your performance, if you sell the most cars, or, you know, whatever, what mm -hmm. have you, you will get a bigger check. Mm -hmm. That will motivate people more mm -hmm. than, like, this abstract of idea <laughs> of, like, I'm going to do good work today because I wish to do better. Yeah, you know, Is it's... that not already the idea behind religion? Yeah, no, 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 and I'm saying people are really bad at their religion, well, is, yeah. it, is what I'm saying. Yeah, but a lot of people follow a religion, and so, like, right. it's, it's not like you are incapable of getting people to believe in an abstract idea. Right, but at the, you know, like, for instance, I'm not saying, like, every, like, mission trip is, like, not effective in any sort of way. Mm -hmm. But I know a lot of mission trips are like, so we're going to go um, to some third world country for a while and we're going to do all these great things. 
and then you have a bunch of like teenagers show up for a week and they hammer a house for a bit yeah. and then they're like I am fulfilled now yeah. I have done my purpose yeah. and it's like you didn't really like if you really wanted to you'd stay there and mm-hmm. like make sure everything grew up and yeah. not saying that that doesn't do good because over time yeah. you get a thousand of those like yeah. wishful fulfilling kids to go out there and do it you'll make a difference but it's not the same as someone yeah. staying and there and uh, making again, a difference. Again, that's a that's a failure in the transmission of the idea that actually doing something good actually means actually doing something good. Right. <laughs> but at the same time, I think someone motivated by money to build a house, they're going to build a whole lot quicker. Mm. And they're going to put in a lot more work and effort mm-hmm. into it by doing so. Um, and again, I just think that that's just where our values are now. And where our values could be. Well, and I, I guess the my point is necessarily why change it. Do you can you see? Could you see um, that kind of individualist society succeeding? No, this is what we have. This no, no, is no, no, why no. it's not working. I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think. It was working because, again, you know, I think this might be a difference in idea, but I think the interference of the government is actually the thing that's messing this up. We've we've turned, we've kind of bastardized the um, capitalist system with government. We've kind of like made them have a baby, and it's turned into an oligarchy. <laughs> You know, all of a lot of these things that people are doing and a lot of the things that are bad are a result of them being able to influence law, which gives them a lot more power than if it was if it was almost kind of like a separation of like church and state, but more mm-hmm. of a separation of economy versus government. Sure, but if the person seeking money wants to pollute. Right. No, no, no. That's, that's, then um, that's where the government right. steps in. Right, 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 right. That, and that's fine. That's <laughs> not necessarily But that is it. the government influencing the economy. Not in a... I, I think there's a distinction to be made in a direct fashion mm-hmm. versus... There, there's a looseness to be had <laughs> there. Like, And you could argue that that's the, the collective group, you know, you're killing people because you're throwing terrible things into the water. You shouldn't do that because it directly harms someone else. Yeah. It's bad. It directly harms an individual. Right, right. It it harms everyone. It's it's just bad, you know. (laughs) So, I think that is a fine example of something being regulated to benefit everyone. Mm-hmm. That's that's an acceptable thing. But there's absolutely the fact that... that and I, I want to say that that's kind of a separation mm-hmm. thing. Like, it's not like government getting in bed with a company. I, it could be like, hey, mm-hmm. so there's this really arbitrary kind of pollution sort of thing, kind of. <laughs> and this other car company makes a lot of that. Can you regulate it? so that car company gets screwed over. <laughs> because that definitely happens, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and that's the kind of thing that ends up, I think, messing with the economy and messing with kind of everyone in general. You know, you can't mm-hmm. necessarily have that individualist thing when you're when you have the weight of government behind your corporation. Mm-hmm. That's when you start getting in trouble. But then is there a way to have that balance out to where the the economy is not influenced by the government, but the economy also has to, or the government also has to protect the individual and the collective from the economic things that could I, cause harm to everyone. I don't think that necessarily the government is responsible for the economy inherently. No. I I don't think it's necessarily its obligation to make sure every, the wheels are running smooth. I don't think it's necessarily the the greaser of mm-hmm. the gears. Um I think it's it's essential role is to basically make sure that people are not hurting other people directly <laughs> or you know through through their actions like if an if a company pollutes a lot 
and people start getting cancers and all that. Yeah. That's a very bad thing and that should be stopped. Mm -hmm. I'm not arguing that <laughs> at all. Um, but I don't think like whether the economy gets kind of a little bit low or a certain company makes mistakes and it goes mm -hmm. under, I don't think it's necessarily the responsibility of the government to make sure that that company survives or that those other people find employment. Sure. But then at what point does a corporation get too big and then just has a monopoly on everything? Is the government responsible for that too? Or just I, let it go? I don't think... But the way, the way that I've heard it phrased is if there really was a total monopoly over something, mm -hmm. like if there was truly a complete monopoly, again, without the influence of government interfering mm -hmm. and basically being in bed mm -hmm. with the company, mm -hmm. that monopoly would be so good that you wouldn't be complaining about it at all. Yes. I think there's the perception. And then they can do whatever they want. No, 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 no. There's still the there's still the pollution laws. There's well, still no. the things. I know, but let's say um, Apple just owns the monopoly on cell phones, right? Which they basically do. No, um, no, 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 not at all. Uh, not uh, not I mean, at all. Yeah, you have an Android, but no, like, no, no. no the, 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 the actually, no, no, no. The rest of the world actually uses Android. Uh, it's only the U.S. Right. that value. It's it's the posh. Regardless of my. Uh, not to not to break down, yeah, yes. but yeah, but let's just say that uh, Apple has the monopoly on cell phones, uh huh. And so then, just basically, everyone buys an Apple phone. Yes, everyone has an iPhone, mm -hmm. and then Apple decides, all right, um, due to blah blah blah, your internet speed is now half. I don't think they would do that. And there's a very good reason why. is because there are other people who also have money, who are also invested in getting themselves and their companies more money, that as soon as they're like, well, we're putting your internet speed at half, as soon as that happens, well, Google's going to show up, or what, what have you, mm -hmm. and they're going to say, you know what, I see an opportunity here, because they have weakened themselves to that point. Yeah, but I'm if, going to make a product that is better mm -hmm. and break their monopoly. Yeah, but if it's a truly like giant monopoly, you don't Google doesn't have the resources because nobody else makes cell phones. Nobody because there's no point Apple makes cell phones. Right, but uh, you 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 understand that that kind of was a thing for a long time with Apple, like legitimately speaking, they were the first, you know, there was BlackBerry sure, but that was more like a personal, uh, you, know, you know, like the PA mm -hmm. computers. Yeah. It was more of a PA computer. It was mm -hmm. kind of smart, but it, it didn't have that smartphone concept that we yeah. have now. Apple was the first to create the true smartphone and Android came along and everyone's like, what? I was, I remember thinking like, who would want an Android phone? Yeah. Like this thing's got to be garbage. And now I have an Android phone yeah. and I would use it all the time. And, and they broke that yes. they didn't they weren't but forced the, into making but a it wasn't phone. a true monopoly in the hypothetical situation that i'm presenting here in that other people made cell phones mm -hmm. and so yes you had like apple this high in the bar graph and everyone else was a little bit lower in the bar graph but like in the monopoly that i'm saying like of the bar graph of people that make cell phones it's apple Mm -hmm. And so for anyone else to just go, ooh, here's my chance, they'd have to build up and make, like, they don't know how to make cell phones. Um, here, okay, <laughs> here's, here's my few arguments here on this one. Um, one, there's a lot more rich people than just Apple. You know, <laughs> Steve Jobs is not the only millionaire. I guess he might have been a billionaire. I'm not aware of that or not. But, um, you know, there's companies such as Microsoft such as Google, there's mm -hmm. other companies out there, and even companies that have nothing to do with cell phones, mm -hmm. that have plenty of money to launch a competitive product against Apple as soon as they start screwing over their customer base. Mm -hmm. So they are able to step in at that point. You mm -hmm. know, it was um, Android's Google. Mm -hmm. Google saw an opportunity. Yes. Yes. They struck and have made plenty of money mm -hmm. making that cell phone carrier. It takes another company Yes. Of around that size. It's not just Apple who owns, like, literally everything. Yes. Um, but 
But then what starts happening once a monopoly gets large enough is that it starts acquiring other companies. Um, yeah. And so then once the company starts acquiring all other companies, then there are no other competitors because they've just acquired don't sell anyone out. that <laughs> I mean and that doesn't that doesn't take into account innovation um, one of the I've kind of been getting into objectivist <laughs> thought a little <laughs> bit more and I'm definitely gonna have to read uh, Atlas Shrugged for sure it's long but I'll try it. I'll <laughs> probably just hate myself for like a three months <laughs> and then just be done with it but um, okay one of one of the examples that I've heard is um, so, you know, there's Rockefeller. He had the mm -hmm. supposed monopoly on oil, oil products. Mm -hmm. You know, anything involving gas was pretty much Rockefeller. Yeah. And so kerosene lamps were a huge thing. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone had kerosene lamps. Everyone used Rockefeller kerosene. Mm -hmm. So if what, never, what no one would ever take into account is that some random dude in a laboratory is about to smash every kerosene lamp product mm -hmm. out there. And that was Thomas Edison inventing the light bulb. Yeah. Out of nowhere, mm -hmm. this guy just pops up and just, no, nope, kerosene's gone pretty much overnight. Yeah. That doesn't take into account innovation and the fact that monopolies are inevitably impossible to maintain due to the march of progress and innovation. Mm-hmm. But it still allows this giant company, and yes, even whenever innovation happens, this just massive monopoly can just acquire the new innovation, take it for themselves, gain all the profits from it, and then they just but Rockefeller own didn't, it all. He didn't start getting into light bulbs or anything like that. His money Could was in oil. It. Maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and and why, why would you... Why would you necessarily, if you have that such a that kind of product, you know, why would you do something like that? Like, uh, for instance, again, you know, if you want to go back to Apple, Apple at one point wasn't the giant corporation we know and love. Mm -hmm. It was, I say that sarcastically sometimes. <laughs> um, it was, um, it was a tiny company mm -hmm. with a few employees that absolutely changed the game. Yeah. IBM. Um, I, I don't know what other stuff. There, there was plenty of other computer companies, but yeah. IBM was the monster in the room. Mm -hmm. And Apple went in and smashed it. Yeah, but IBM wasn't With innovation. as large as this hypothetical monster that I'm proposing. Well, and I'm, this, I'm saying yeah. I, I don't know if necessarily that monster has ever or will ever exist. I think, I think we allow companies to have more sway over us by letting them get in bed with government now is what I'm saying. Yeah. They can, the fact that they can push legislation through in ways that they couldn't beforehand mm -hmm. is a very bad thing. And that's what I'm yeah. against. Um, try looking up how many of these major companies are actually under the umbrella of a larger corporation. Oh yeah, no, because, no, no, there's, there's, there's plenty, yeah. yeah. Because there's basically like four or something. Like, and I don't know the specifics because I, they're like so obscure, but they own everything. You oh, you, you're talking yeah. like, um, oh, okay, like Dove Soap is underneath uh, Heckler and Gamble or, yeah, or like, what, whatever like, those. Yeah, yeah Procter and Gamble. Like, yeah. But like Monsanto owns just like this giant umbrella. It's a conglomerate. Of yeah. yeah. Um, what do you realize that would be a lot more visible? to the public if the monopoly laws weren't there like you would see that it's all under this company and it wouldn't be this weird like feeder system of yeah we'll invest in this company and it's kind of yeah. like behind closed doors that would be much more in the open yeah but even still once they sort of own all of that any form of innovation that comes up they can acquire it Again, not not necessarily. There are, there are plenty of rich you're people. counting on yeah. Well, you're counting on the people not selling out. You're counting on blah yeah. blah blah. And like, no, 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 and it, it, it's true. Um, so there there are absolutely companies out there that exist that are not under the corporate umbrella and that are fairly large. Mm -hmm. That that absolutely exists, mm -hmm. and they can survive if they wish. 
or they can sell their company at a price that they want. Yeah. That's fine. Mm-hmm. I, I don't see the issue with somebody saying like, yeah, I just want to make money. Here you, here's my company. Yeah. But that's, 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 that's the fine. motivation in our society. Money. Yeah. Which I'm absolutely okay with. Which just leads to the innovation would be sought out for money. Giant corporation buys the innovation for money. Mm-hmm. Giant monopoly. But again, you, you, you have to you have to see that that's not inherently bad if they if they get more things. That's not it's not necessarily bad. I think that I think the issue is when again you start getting more into the um, fact that they have sway in Washington now. That's more mm-hmm. scary to me. The, the what we have right now is a lot more scary to me than I think the idea of yeah. But again, big corporations the corporation existing. having control over all of these products still affects but, everything else. Actually, go go ahead. What's uh, what's what's wrong with with that? I, again, uh, the corporation just going, hey, let's just cut your internet speed in half, or hey, um, we've been reading all your texts or whatever. Because oh. we just have them all. <laughs> we were you're acting like Google doesn't do that already well, right yeah. now. But that's exactly it. Like they can they are a monarch that just has the power to do whatever they want because people have their product and then they don't have a choice because they're the ones that control that product. Yeah, but you, you can, and again, you can come back with a, um, a higher quality product. Mm, and not, not if it's high enough quality and you don't want to be acquired. Yeah, no, that, that exists. I'm telling you that the does motivation exist. is money here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if so, you're acquired, you're making so much more money than struggling so hard to fight this 10-ton gorilla. But what if you can break that 10-ton gorilla? What if your idea, what if your innovation is so good, you can break the gorilla? If it's there and the company didn't acquire it first. Yeah, and I'm telling you that happens plenty of times. That's, I think yeah. that's what's led the general innovation of modern mm-hmm. society is that need to compete and that need to consistently innovate. That's, that, I think that's kind of the, the whole idea there. Yeah. Um, all right, one more thing. We had mentioned that uh, Marxism and uh, the expecting people to be that part of the well-oiled machine. Um, but then I had said technology is what yeah. sort of yeah. makes the rest of that work is that you don't need the lazy dude who paints houses. Mm-hmm. You need a robot that paints houses <laughs> or houses that just have like whatever in their walls or whatever that makes them change color. Like technology is what gets rid of the things that humans don't need or want to do. I think that's wishful thinking, to be quite honest with you. I'm not, I'm not saying that we can't, you know, reduce those sorts of labors or that, you know, there will, you know, be technology to fix, you know, just kind of crap jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, it's already there. Depending. I mean, there, there's definitely reasons why we haven't switched already because the economy depends on people working shit jobs to get money to buy the shit things as soon as automation takes off uh the people with the small jobs can't afford to buy the small products anymore because their jobs have been taken over by automation right no but i think the um I think there will always be crappy labor to be done. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, no, no. I mean, sometimes it's, uh, I, I think sometimes it's easier to just do it yourself instead of having some kind of specialized machine to work for you. Mm. 
You know, like it's probably easier to get up and clean your bedroom or something than have a specialized robot that you've paid thousands, I guess in your metaphorical mm. society, without money, but has taken a lot of resources to make. In inevitably, mm -hmm. you know, the programming, all that stuff is mm -hmm. a lot of work. Um, it would be easier to do that than to have a specialized robot. I think that's absolutely true. You know, you still, you know, throughout history, things that have made things easier for people mm -hmm. have always spawned more jobs that require you to do more things. So, like, for instance, uh, you don't have to throw your human waste into the street or, you know, bury it mm -hmm. somewhere or do something crazy, you know, plumbing has made it infinitely easier mm -hmm. to maintain your lifestyle and it's made your life so much easier, but you got plumbers now. Mm -hmm. That was a job that just didn't exist, mm -hmm. you know, um, 150 or so years ago. Mm -hmm. And that came about because we innovated and we changed things. Mm -hmm. and we now have this tech where you can do that, but you also require more people to do those sort of things. Yes. Um, and it, that's pretty much true regardless, you know, um, computers make a million things so much easier to do. You know, you can, you can cut back on having like a billion accountants that are versed in all of these things, mm -hmm. but you still need the programmers that understand. You still need tons of people to do that. So yes, the workforce changes. Um, the workforce evolves to work on much larger problems. So... You don't, you don't have just a dude or an accountant that just crunches numbers because you're too stupid to crunch numbers yourself. You just have your computer. But then you have now a programmer who is capable of right. making innovative right. technology. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that is a much better job to have than being a freaking accountant. Not necessarily. <laughs> I, I mean, some people genuinely <laughs> enjoy accounts. Oh, yeah, Somehow. Yeah. I, I don't understand these people, for yeah. the record. But uh, but they don't have to be a programmer. For, like, shitty example anyways. But No, no, you, like, you're fine. You're fine, yeah. It's that the technology allows us to move on to bigger and better things. I don't have to be a cashier if people can do self-checkout. Right. I, I think the I think the general consensus though is everyone hates self checkout. That's because they want to interact with a human being. Well, sure, but have you been to Japan and their automated stuff? I would say that's because of the lack of young people. <laughs> to to be quite honest with you, I mean you, you have an older populace that's aging. Um and you don't necessarily have the people to fill those jobs. It's a requirement that they automate because there are literally not enough young yeah, people. Yeah, and the society adapts and right. are totally right. fine and yeah, almost yeah, yeah. better because the machine the machine the machine can take your order correctly, right, a hundred percent of the time. <laughs> right, 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 right. No, 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 no. I, I definitely get what you mean, and I'm not saying it won't change. I'm not saying it won't innovate, but I'm saying even from a, um, you know, capitalist perspective, it makes sense to automate. Mm -hmm. It makes sense, you know. But I, I want to say that, you know, even then, you're still going to have to have someone maintain the machines, make sure mm -hmm. everything's running. You've got to have that support yeah. group. You've got to have after that. You have to mm -hmm. have more people on the line to call mm -hmm. if they ever have complaints or, yeah. you know, if you had a metaphorical McDonald's. Whenever the machine becomes as smart as the human, uh, yeah, yeah, then the humans won't need other humans to do the shitty things. Here's the. Uh, and I guess this is going back to kind of uh, why I brought up, you know, again, we're not necessarily speaking of the Venus Project, but your ideal society. Yeah. Um, but kind of one of the points that I was thinking I might bring up is capitalism allows more choice mm -hmm. in the fact that not everything capitalism does is quote unquote efficient. You know, um, importing something halfway across the world because you enjoy that product yeah. doesn't really make sense. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't make sense to um, eat avocados that are available in one 
time zone yeah. that go bad in like a week. <laughs> uh, it doesn't make sense to import that. It's a, it's an inefficient import, mm -hmm. if you will. You know, because you can. Yeah, it's like yeah, you have food here mm -hmm. that you can eat that's perfectly acceptable. Mm -hmm. But I like avocados. Yeah, I want an avocado. Sure. Why would I get an avocado in a system that is based solely off of efficiency if it is inefficient to bring me that avocado and there's no monetary gain to bringing me that avocado? Because there's an excess in resources. See, I don't, I don't see that as, as a real motivation, though, because if you're basing things off of, one, the environment, and two, off of the efficiency of the whole, you know, making sure everyone has just what they need mm -hmm. and what they somewhat desire not mm -hmm. not necessarily exactly everything they want it doesn't make much sense to me to bring in a product that goes bad within a week on a ship that uses a ton of resources to in, get unless somebody reason, is paying for it in the same reason that a lot of people in this society with their excess of money go because i can yeah you know no, no, it's it's the same thing in a society that has an ex excess of resources to go because we can't. Because we have the resources available to do so. I don't think that happens, though. I, I don't think in a system Why? that is totally efficient that you would get that kind of choice. Because it doesn't make sense to have, let's say, five... I know I'm using car companies quite a mm -hmm. bit here. But it doesn't make sense to have five car companies. It doesn't make sense to have that choice if you can have a centralized location which just makes all of the cars. No, and you can just design your own car. Like, B they make a functioning thing, and also uh, transportation and ha owning a car is okay. preposterous no, 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 no. technologically advanced society. <laughs> no, uh, okay, okay. No, um, again, I, I, like my, I like my freedom, and I like my choice. I like to be yeah. able to drive somewhere anytime that I want, you can. whenever I want. Yeah, I can. And you can in this society, too. No, I gotta wait for the train. You don't have to wait. Like, you underestimate how fucking good technology is. <laughs> I don't think so. But I think, the, I think the individual serving the individual allows more choice and more flexibility than that. There's no, there's no reason to have a, um, okay, there's like Starbucks versus your local coffee. Mm-hmm place you know why not just have the coffee that you want and make why, the way why that make, you want why make multiple coffee if it's more efficient to simply make universal victory coffee that's you are assuming but the that name, go, go that's ahead. you're assuming that because stuff becomes 100% efficient that the individual goes away and I, that is not what I'm saying. But, well, I guess what I'm saying is um, capitalism allows for this kind of myriad of products that I know could not be possible under this collectivist system. You can have a myriad of products because the resources are available. There's not an infinite amount of resources, though. There's not an infinite amount of resources here, and we still do it. Right, 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 because it's the spirit of competition and wishing to make a name for yourself or make money, et cetera, et cetera. Like, there wouldn't, there wouldn't be a Starbucks, um, my, my, think would, my, thought, my, think, uh, my thought would be there wouldn't be a Starbucks at every corner. You would just go to the grocery store to purchase, or not purchase, but I guess, I don't know, do you have resource coin or, or, or something uh, you can like surely there's a limit on hmm? surely there's a limit on what you can get well I mean <laughs> the the limit there has to be a reasonable limit like the I can, limiting yeah. is you going I don't need this crap e and we <laughs> we do that now yeah, because we don't want to spend our money on excessive crap. No, we do it. Even super rich people go, I don't need that crap. And that's because their values are in a place 
where they realize that they don't need it regardless of if they have the abundance of resources to acquire Mm -hmm. that their values are in a place to where i don't need this crap you can have both you can have an abundance of resources and values that say i don't need an extreme excess of things there's not the two aren't mutually like right 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 right. no no i I get i get what you mean i'm just saying i don't i think your choice would be limited because it doesn't make sense to expend excess resources just like you were saying there's limits on you know the individual wishing to consume there would absolutely be limits on what the collective would consume i i see that as a as a matter of fact you know like you were you're speaking of cars there would you're be no of cars. Huh? You're speaking of cars. <laughs> no, 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 no. But I'm, I was, I was referencing what you were saying. Like a technologically advanced society has no want of cars. No, not a want of cars, but a, a, techno- need, a technologically a advanced society realizes that a human driving a car is incredibly dangerous. We already realize this now. Yeah, and so cars drive themselves because a car can a computer can drive a okay, billion so you, you, you times were, better than i can you, you and were talking, i know that you, you were talking an automated system oh, okay yes. okay no no, no. I, I thought you meant like the mere concept of cars would disappear and we'd all just have like mass transit no okay 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 i get you. I, I misread your, <laughs> your thought there my bad okay yeah no 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 and and definitely now i mean it would be great to like be able to like go to the bar do whatever drink and then, as much and then, as you want yeah. just walk outside and hop in a car and it just takes you home right that is right. what transportation would be in a technologically advanced society right 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 yeah no 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 and i think that's that's heading here anyways mm-hmm. you know that's that's absolutely on its way now under our system yeah you know i mean you have corporations that are doing those sort of things these mm-hmm. days Tesla cars already can drive themselves in certain places. Yeah, and then there's there's Google as well, mm-hmm. which is doing the same thing. It's it's kind of a neat race that's mm-hmm. happening, which is going to totally change up the game. Yeah, um, and so you don't you're not skeptical about that technological advancement, but you're skeptical about other technological advances. I'm not speaking of other technological advances. What what I'm I guess the suggestion that I was attempting to make was um, that no matter what the technological increase, there will always be a necessity and a, I, I hate to use the word market, but a market to fill of people who are doing different jobs. Yes, the jobs change. Like, we're not farmers anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, 1% of the population <laughs> in America are farmers. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure if you were to tell someone that, you know, 200 years ago mm-hmm. they would have looked at you like oh man we just we must just be doing absolutely nothing mm-hmm. these days you know like there must be yeah. nothing going on like everyone's just probably lazing about because everything's mm-hmm. taken care of right yeah but that's... but then the jobs expand and then there's more stuff and yes. there's more things to do perpetually so i, I but the don't... jobs would fall into much higher ideas like developing a technology that can do this thing or making you know trying to imagine different ways to discover new elements or whatever it's yeah um and and i get what you mean there's there's going to be an increase no matter what the society um, in demand for educated individuals, mm-hmm. as long as technology advances, there's yes. there's going to be a demand for that. But my suggestion is that there will always be some facet that is just crappy labor. Sure, you know, quote unquote crappy yeah, labor. Yeah, but and the, the but the crappy won't be a cashier because that is automated. Anything that can be automated, right, will which, just be. Which is is fine, you know. But and so the crappy labor would be like mm, robot 
fixing technician. <laughs> like right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I mean, you know, maybe at that point, maybe it's like, oh, oh, good lord, you're a robot technician. You, you lowly human being. I no, feel so just, bad for it, you. No, the values <laughs> should be in place. That it's like, man, I'm so glad that this guy wants to be a robot fixing technician because. I don't, I don't want to do that yeah, crap, and yeah, our yeah. robots need fixing. Right, right, which I think, I guess my my thought on that is, you know, money allows, like, being a cashier, mm -hmm. being in these quote-unquote crappy jobs to be palatable. It, it's palatable because you want to help. I see that's that's where I get to where I don't necessarily think that's <laughs> that's possible because it's been possible through religion thousands of people have been brainwashed into thinking that whenever they die they're going to go and meet a dude with a beard. Yeah, yeah, no no no, but I th I think that's more like I will arbitrarily abstain from eating crab because it's unholy. I I think that's you see a lot more of that than necessarily. I I don't know. The world isn't full of Buddhist monks who are just like <laughs> sitting around, you know, waiting for enlightenment and doing like really mundane tasks don't all day. Wait for enlightenment. It, okay. Well, yeah. well, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, you know what I mean. I know. Like, it, the world isn't that had that idea really hasn't caught on as much as I guess. That's possible. I think it takes a certain individual to be that kind of pious attitude. I don't think everyone can get onto that, like, level of piety. If, if you want to kind of equate, like, the, mm -hmm. the labor of crap jobs with kind of a, its own sort of enlightenment yeah, philosophy. But, uh, is, is but even still, I'm not doing. everyone would be a robot-fixing technician. Yeah, no, no, no. Because yeah. there would be people who are like, right. Right, I don't right. want to do that. I want to go to space. Like, <laughs> just imagining the robot te technicians being basically mon monks. <laughs> like, it's just like... <laughs> yes. Or they just feel like, uh, right. I'm not really smart right. enough to, like, calculate the trajectory of going from yeah. here to yeah. one of Jupiter's moons. I'm just smart enough to fix a robot, which is but why quite, quite a lot of... Yeah, 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 no, no, no. Uh, but why do anything, I guess, in that society? If, you know, other than the the piety of work and the desire for the greater... Men, piety of work, but like... The, the, the betterment of the whole. Other than the motivation to the betterment of the whole, why ever do anything in that society? It's because stuff can be so much better, and that's cool. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not... Or I, I why does a scientist it. want to discover new things? Is it because it'll help the world, or is it because I don't know about things, so I want to find out? Right, right. There's always the the desire to explore and the want to see new things, but I think... It would allow us to explore much more so. But I don't think necessarily everyone's built to make to be a scientist. Not everyone's built to do things for the sake of doing things. There okay. are plenty of people who Then those just people wish would to... be musicians or whatever. I don't know. I mean, I... other arts, obviously. <laughs> I see quite a few people that would just sit around and play video games all day or do nothing at all. And that's not valued. And that is looked down upon. But now, and it's looked and it would be looked down upon. Right, but there's the, there's the real world consequence now of pulling that kind of lifestyle. Like, if you don't do anything, you don't have any money, you can't advance yourself at all. There's no, there's nothing nagging. I mean, there's always something nagging at the back of your mind that mm -hmm. you aren't moving, you aren't bettering yourself. You, know, you don't have things because you haven't worked mm -hmm. you know you don't you, you can't buy the things that you want the things that you like because there's no work that you've put in there's no achievement i guess you know there's yeah no... well the and the so search not... for achievement is still there no, no 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 but i'm saying there's no there's nothing to get them up in the morning i guess is what i'm saying if everything is taken care for care 
care is taken for you, why do anything? Because I know there's there's absolutely people who think that way. And you saw that under collectivists in the past. It's, it's again the tragedy of the commons. Someone is taking too much and not putting enough in. It's a desire to achieve. You know, um, this is a bit off topic, but mm. do you know um, early New England culture was actually very collectivist? Mm. Yeah, yeah, it was extremely. And, uh, continue. Yeah, no, no, it was extremely collectivist because it's um, and it stemmed from, you know, the Christian ideals mm -hmm. of the time. You know, you you help your fellow man, and you mm -hmm. you all as a group pull together and better the community, mm -hmm. and that worked until it didn't. Why didn't it? Well, because people realized I don't have to do anything. I can just sit around. I don't. I don't want to work in the fields, so I'm not going to work in the fields if food is always there. Mm -hmm. And I will sit around and do nothing. Okay. Or less, or you know, less yeah. than you know the very bare minimum amount of work. Sure. To make it, and that's a very inefficient system that that causes issues when you have that kind of lack of motivation, and then. Later on, it, the ideology changed to more of an individualist approach. Like, if you want to eat, mm -hmm. you're going to have to work. Mm -hmm. If you want to make, you know, your life better, if you, uh, if you want to enjoy the goods, mm -hmm. you know, the fruits of other people's labor, you have to work. Sure. You, know, you have to put in a certain amount to gain a certain amount. Sure. And I, and I, think, that's, I think that's kind of the beauty of money, is you have that system there. And there's... Lots of downsides. No, no um, and, and I think that's more of the, the system that we have now. I don't think that's an inherent vice of money. I think, you know, when people say, like, something like, mm -hmm. the root of all evil is money, it's like, no, money is simply a resource used by man. Mm -hmm. And the root of all evil is man, and he just happens to be using money to mm -hmm. do bad things that they already wish to be. Um... I would just rather live in a better world where people aren't killing each other for money. Yep. Um, rather than, like... Right, right, no, no, no. And, and I think... You know, not, not to interrupt your, your thought ahead. there, but, you know, I think a lot of... Um, on our off-mic conversation, <laughs> there, I think a lot of the issue um, that we had discussing was... What you're suggesting is, you know, in theory, perfect, quote unquote. Like no. it's or it's a system that would lead to, you know, that zero yes. point of, of of quote unquote perfection that's impossible and intangible. And it's really hard to say, like, like yeah, you know, I want peace. I want the world to be a better place. Mm -hmm. I want things to go well for mm -hmm. humanity. I want all of those things too. I just don't see it working in your in your sort of setting. I, I don't see people pulling together like that. I think people are short sighted and self interested more than they are long sighted and interested in the betterment of the whole. So I think it's I think it's beneficial and worthwhile to work with people's inherent flaws. I'd rather work with their inherent flaws to cause the betterment of the whole than to hope for their inherent virtue to cause the betterment of the whole. If there, that makes sense. There is information that states otherwise. And that view of human nature is not as accurate as you might think. Go go ahead. Go ahead. Um, well, I can't quite go ahead. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, no, no, you're good. You're good. Yeah. But um, there's information that says otherwise that humans are a little bit more than that selfish kind. Um, I'm not, I'm not so, suggesting that people are all inherently just awful, terrible things. In I didn't any say that way. either. Yeah. Um, but there, just because we can't achieve perfection doesn't mean that we shouldn't strive towards it. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. I'm not suggesting that as either. That just because, oh, this society is really, really hard to achieve and perfection is impossible. So just don't go for it. No, 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 no. The, oh, okay. 
instead, we should just go for it. It would be very, very hard to do so. But the benefits from doing so, from attempting to achieve perfection and continuing to strive towards per perfection are much greater benefits regardless of if we ever even actually achieve quote unquote perfection. Right. Um, and I guess my, my stance on that is humanity just point of fact as a whole because of the amount of people that are out there mm -hmm. is unreliable. Sure. Um, and I would much rather work within the bounds of slight flaws, mm -hmm. you know, make the flaws good yeah. is what I'm saying <laughs> is, is make, turn that, make a society in which someone's flaws can be turned into mm -hmm. a virtue. The poor sides of humanity, the lesser sides are flipped. Mm -hmm. So instead of being something that is seen as bad, seen as awful, is turned into something beneficial for sure. the group, for everyone. Uh -huh. Whereas I believe that the system that you have proposed relies very heavily on the virtue of people doing the right thing. It's, it's very dependent on people doing the right thing most of the time, if not all of the time. And that's, I don't think that's a reliable system to maintain, um, ever. People aren't as reliable technology is. And that's, that's the, the, yeah, like the add on that makes it work. That's why Marxism didn't work out is because it didn't implement technology. That's where I'll leave it off. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, we started in the middle of a conversation. This is Caleb. Hi, Caleb. Hello. I'm Santiago Ramones. Hello, and again, welcome to Bit Depth. Um, so yeah, this is a fun thing. Uh, once again, you're gonna be a writer someday, and we'll know about that whenever that happens. <laughs> um, and I'm very excited to see what comes out of that because. As I stated before in the last podcast, you have some really good ideas, and that'll be fun. Uh, I'm excited to have you on in the future and have other conversations with you and probably some other people in a group. Um, so I don't think you have any like social media you want to. No, no. Is there any uh, quick advice that you're like, hey, everyone should do this or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think everyone should take care of themselves first and foremost. Cool. Um, and then, yeah, so thank you for listening. Love never fails. It's going to be okay. I might be wrong.